got one of my trees I planted back here. I don't know if it's going to survive. I stuck some sticks around it, which is what I should have done in the beginning to prevent them from getting at it. But we'll see what happens. I'm not sure it's going <laughs> to... I'm not sure it's going to live through that one, but maybe. We'll see. Super mild, super mild for January. Where's my posse? You guys coming? Oliver, come on right now. <laughs> Oliver, come. Are you hot on the trail of a bunny? Oh, there, here comes the other kitty. Come on. <laughs> There's bunnies back there too. Did you guys find? My camera lens is probably gonna freeze up. <clears throat> Come on, Molly. You're VIP, you're allowed in. All right. Oh, yay. And there's the fishies. All right, Ollie, you go sit on the straw and keep your feet nice and dry over there. Good boy. And over here. Before I went in last night, I mixed up, well, I added water to my love this stuff, coconut core. Looks really good. I'm actually going to pull some out and let it dry a bit so I can start some seeds, hopefully tonight or tomorrow. That's how easy it was. Look how much is in that one pack. And actually, I could probably add a little bit more water to it for it to expand even more, but um, this is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna pull that out. Hey guys, it's me, Bren, and I'm out in the dome today. I'm hoping to do a couple of videos for you guys, at least uh, every week, to show you what I've got going on in here. And um, yesterday and today, I took some time to just start cleaning up um, the uh, a lot of the leaves on the plants are starting to drop and that's normal because the sun in january i think we're what are we the set almost the second week second week of january beginning of the second week and the sun's getting a little bit higher and uh, the sun has been out which is nice because all that energy gets pumped into the dome and um the soil and everything starts collecting the heat and that's a whole nother video um but also the plants are in a kind of extreme range of temperatures so that's when you find out what plants are going to survive through um till spring summer planting oliver come oliver come on i think mr toady is over in that straw pile because he keeps going over and sniffing it good boy <laughs> anyways um so what's happening is um no not particular not today not today in the dome um the sun's hardly been out it was out this morning um but the last couple of days we almost had full sun and the temperature reading inside the dome got up to 70 71 and then at night we're in the 20s outside in fact we were below 20 uh, the first day we got really warm outside or the full sun and um uh, so the temperature was about 40 42 in here in certain spots so what's going to happen is the leaves that we're holding on from uh summer and spring are going to drop and that's okay because it doesn't mean the plant's dead it just means new plants will start will start sprouting if you don't go crazy watering in the next few months and that's on certain plants so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to take the camera around and kind of show you a little bit about what's going on and what i've got growing in here 
and uh, hopefully it will help you out or inspire you to try growing something new in your dome or your greenhouse structure. So, all right, here we go. Oh. <laughs> So yesterday I got right in here and started cleaning up um, some of my peppers that will do great and they're still doing great in fact there's some new growth right down there this is one of my mini jalapenos this one only gets about actually about this tall this one's doing a little better I'm not sure why this one who knows this one's doing a little better but you just want to get in there and when you see uh, leaves like this just don't be afraid to go ahead and take those off because as things start to warm up in here new growth will come on and it's also a good kind good time to kind of prune those peppers back um this this is one of my hot ones i think oh this is when i wintered over and yeah it's a hot one uh hot pepper peanut okay that's a good one that's a hot one and this is my not a peanut i don't know if this is gonna work i'm actually starting new new seeds of the peppers as well so most of these in here oh yeah this is my really hot this is a hottie hot uh, like a scorpion i think this one is or oh orange habanero that's a good one that's not my super hot one where'd the super hot one go might be where did i put oh it's this one right here and these always kind of have a hard time hanging on but i'm gonna leave him alone in fact i put some um, live mulch down here so it should be doing fine this is my mystery dan pepper i call it because it was a seed a friend of mine gave me and uh i know it, it's actually a scorpion so um we're just gonna leave it be and we're not gonna water it so i kind of put it there so i didn't forget um but you just want to go through and kind of clean out all the dead leaves and things you may see which i pretty much did up in here yesterday for the most part and you can even take off some of the blooms that are already done. This one's gonna open up still, so we'll leave that one be. And, oh, I'll get back in here. And just take off any dead or not happy looking leaves you may see, and that won't hurt anything. Um, oh, look at this, I even have new growth. And um, this is my, this is my Meyer Lime. Um, this one's doing really good. And actually yesterday, I picked a couple of my lemons. Well, they actually fell off because I missed them. Here's, oh, here's one back here. See them? You can actually pick those and bring them in. Oh, they smell so good. You just touch them and you can smell the citrus. So those, those are doing good. But just get on in there and don't be afraid in things like this. This can be, this can actually be pruned all the way back and new growth will come up on this one. Um, the cannas have pretty much died back. I'm going to wait to prune those back just because it's a little early for those. Um, as you can tell, my leaves have fallen off the goji. Still have some goji berries on there. And this is one of my mandevillas. Just doing really good for the most part. That one does about that way. And here is my, oh, this is my this is my pomegranate coming up from down there you can actually take and prune this at this time but since i have the space over here i'm gonna actually let that grow and that won't actually get new growth on it until later in mid-february so it's doing just fine and uh this one got a little too cold back in november and what i really need to do is just come in here and take the majority of these leaves right in off like that and then you can compost compost those um, these don't really they're not wet so they're not going to introduce too much um, bugs or uh, disease but if you get them off now you'll actually encourage new growth on those as the sun kicks in and oliver what are you smelling is there a mousey in here is there a mouse? What do you smell? What do you smell? You're smelling something. There's a snake that lives in here. And there is Mr. Toady. So maybe he smells that. I'm not sure. All right. Buddy, you can come in. I always smell something. You look for a mouse? Tell him about the mouse. Oh, Buddy just wants to take a nap.
Lucy's in too. Find the mice, mouse. She's All right, so yeah, this time of year it looks a little messy. You just want to get in here and start moving things around and cleaning it up in the next couple of weeks. I got some leaves over there that need trimmed back. And um, look at this parsley. This one is doing really well in here. And oh yeah, I went in, I got in here and cleaned up the geranium. This geranium is going to do so well in here um, year round. Yeah. Oh yeah, borage over there that I started from seed. It's getting there. I probably should have started it a little earlier so I could get some blooms off of it, but no blooms this year, and that's fine. One of my favorite plants or trees in my dome is this tea tree. This tea tree is huge. Look how big it is. It goes all the way up the whole side of the dome and it's planted directly in the ground in the dome so that way it can survive here in Northwest Ohio. And I'll tell you right now, it is like heaven just smelling this. And the really, really cool thing about this is I was able to find this plant uh, at a local nursery uh, six years ago, seven years ago, I think I put this in. It's been chopped back a few times just because it would, it, it just gets huge in here and goes nuts. <clears throat> um, but I did see it recently again at my, the same garden center. Um, so if you're interested, I can let you know where that was, or you can ask your local garden center to hook you up with a tea tree. Um, now I'm going to warn you when you get it, the plant will probably only be about this big, but oh, Sissy? Sissy? Oh, getting in trouble. The thing will go nuts though. You gotta see what Sissy's doing. Oh, that wasn't Sissy. That was Buddy, huh? Is that Buddy? What's Buddy? He's over here getting kisses from Oliver. <laughs> was that you, Sissy? Did you find the mouse? He's basically grab it. Okay, so what you want to do is basically grab a bucket you can use uh, for composting. If it's too snowy outside, that's okay. You can keep your compost pile and your bucket in the dome structure because uh, it actually will collect heat as well because any little bit of mass, I really do believe, helps with that whole passive heat thing. So and this mandevilla up there, this is my white, my white uh, mandevilla that I don't always find locally. So I was trying to winter these over again. And I'm gonna leave them there. They are starting to drop yellow leaves and that's fine. I'm gonna leave that be for a bit cause it's not wet. And I'll probably end up cleaning those leaves out more into February when the sun's a little more higher. And I know the sun will be out a little more in mid February in my neck of the woods. So we're gonna leave that and I know I haven't lost it. So we're gonna leave that leaves. But you do wanna get in and like some of my Basil is starting to get a little weepy here. Just a little. It got cold the other night. So you can harvest that. And actually, you could still use that. These are just more of an experiment. And I'm really happy with how long this basil survived in the cool temperature. And um, I've got the name of the seed I can share with you. I'll probably blog about it, definitely. But I've got parsley in here. In fact, I need to harvest some of this parsley. Um, for a recipe, I'm making meatloaf, and it's yummy. <laughs> Here's another parsley, and there it is. And now this one is kind of interesting. This is my uh, miniature variety of the pomegranate, and it seems to hold on leaves longer than my large one. I'm not sure what that's all about, but um, it's holding on there, and it will have new growth like I said, in the next month or so. So we just kind of leave it be, don't water it, we'll be fine. Now, talking about cleaning up and getting ready for new peppers, ugh, this is a mess. My next job in here is to get in here and clean this mess up. I was experimenting to see how long the peppers would survive. They did pretty well. 
Um, but now it's time to get in here and just basically uh, clean it up. Most of these I'm going to compost. Some of them, because they're still pretty green, I'm going to hold on to them and see if I can get them to produce again. But this is definitely, definitely going to be cleaned up <laughs> real soon here so we can get going on some new new varieties and whatnot. Now, I always get the algae in here, but come uh, spring and summer when I can use the hose more in here and it's warmer in here, it's, it's so easy to clean these off. I just use vinegar and water mixture and it usually comes right off. A little bit of scrubbing on that, easy, comes right off. But yeah, I haven't figured that one out yet. How to prevent, if at all, um, getting the algae like that, so there it is. Thing. And um, just go through as time allows and get rid of all those dead and yucky looking leaves so the new ones can be encouraged to sprout. And that's pretty much what I do in here this time of year. I am also going to be starting, and I'll show more about that in my next video, um, I will be starting some new uh, perennial seeds in the dome because it's cooler in here and my, a lot of the perennials that I grow from seed like hollyhock and rutabaca and um, what else do I have those are my favorites I can't think right now anyhow <laughs> I'll tell you on the next video because I have a whole pile of seeds to start um, in the dome here and I'm going to show you how I do that this time of year in January in Ohio so I hope you join me then Thank you so much for checking out this video today. You can find this and other creative living ideas on my website at brenhaas.com. I hope to see you there.